This is Texlahoma Barbecue, and it's one of my favorite barbecue joints. And my dad has eaten a lot of barbecue. When we found out that they use Cook Shack smokers, made here in Oklahoma, we had to go check out the factory and find out more. This is Cook Shack in Ponca City, Oklahoma. Let's see what they do. Our tour guide was the Cook Shack CEO and president, Stuart Powell. He even showed us a new product that no one outside of the company has ever seen. First, let's see their other products and look at how they're made. Cook Shack has two lines of cookers, residential and commercial. On the commercial side, they offer electric and pellet-fired smokers. These are for slow-smoked foods. And pellet-fired charbroilers for wood-fired flavored grilling. And a pellet-fired pizza oven for wood-fired pizza. These product lines come in a variety of sizes. Need a model small enough for a food truck? They can do that. Need to smoke 750 pounds of pork butt or 110 chickens at the same time? They've got you covered. Rotating racks, smokers. So the racks rotate like this in it. Oh, so this is okay. the smallest one we make. It'll hold 300 pounds of meat. So like um, Texlahoma, they have two of our, they have one 500 pound and one 750 pound unit. Because they have two locations now. Uh, yeah, yeah. they have two. Lo well, but that's in each store. Oh, yeah. yeah. In each store. Do you want restaurant performance and quality at home? Their residential line offers smoking and grilling products too, with electric smokers, pellet-fired smokers, and pellet-fired grill and smoker combos. In addition, they offer all kinds of accessories, including smoker attachments, pellets, wood chunks, sauces, spices, covers, and spare parts. This is the factory floor, and looking at it from above, you can get a good idea of how things flow through. Flat metal stock, usually stainless, enters the factory here. In this area, the sheets of metal are formed into product components. The workhorses of this area are the laser cutter and the press brake. The laser can cut very precise parts out of the metal very quickly. An operator programs the machine to get the desired cuts and minimize waste. The cutting head uses nitrogen cooling for smooth, clean edges and to preserve the protective film on the stainless. Parts that need to be bent move to the press brake. It's programmable too, which makes for easy adjustments to get precise bends. It automatically sets up so that he doesn't have to go back over and tell it, you know, which bins are going to go. And because that's, well, you know, it was a 90 degree bend, but because it's only uh, a uh, 30 degree bend, he, the computer automatically tells it how much pressure to put on that so it bends it the correct way. And then he checks the first part to make sure it's correct. If it's not, he can adjust it. Check the second one, make sure he got it right. Automatic backstops make setups fast and efficient. In the middle of the factory are production lines. Cook Shack employs lots of lean manufacturing practices to keep costs down and quality high. The production lines are an example of that. These lines can be reconfigured based on capacity. For example, as fall approaches, demand for residential smokers goes up. They are particularly popular with hunters, football fans, and for cooking for holiday gatherings. The production lines can be adjusted to give higher demand products more capacity. Workers easily adapt to the flexible production lines because they are all cross-trained, which is another lean manufacturing practice. In the production lines, individual components are made into sub-assemblies, and the sub-assemblies get assembled into the final product. One of my favorite things to see was how they manage the parts inventory. 
I've seen enough different ways to know that however sophisticated an inventory system is, if it's not easy and quick to use, it doesn't hold up well. At Cook Shack, parts are pulled from stock shelves. Each part is given a low quantity trigger and a laminated tag is placed at the low trigger level. When an employee pulls the last part above that tag, he or she sends that tag over to parts production and a new batch is made to restock the shelf. I'm going to start giving Dad a reorder tag when assigned to buy more chocolate milk. Most of the products have an inner and outer cabinet. In between, a thick layer of special insulation is added. This not only provides energy efficiency, it also provides safety and comfort to the kitchen staff. Controls and wiring from the panel shop are added. The sophistication level of the controls depends on the model, but the controls are responsible for things like temperature control loops, ignition, fan operation, door sensors, and being an operator interface. Final assembly doesn't mean that its journey is done. It still has two important stops to make. Its next stop is the testing area where the product is cycled through all of its operations to make sure everything is working and it passes all of the quality checks. This large exhaust hood collects the delicious smelling smoky goodness and exhaust it outside. Okay, when a product card, passes buddy. all of its quality tests, a bell is rung to celebrate the completion of another unit. Let's go, boom, boom, boom. There you go, good job. <laughs> The last stop is the shipping department, and it's a lot more than tossing it in a box and slapping a label on it. The product is cleaned and well packaged for its journey ahead. Residential or commercial, the day your smoker, grill, or oven arrives is exciting. The shipping team plays an important role in making sure that experience is a positive one by working to make sure the order shows up in great shape. The factory also has a lot of warehouse space. There are racks of accessories, parts, and consumables such as wood fuel, spices, and sauces. Some of the residential pellet grills are made in an overseas production facility. These grills are stocked at the factory for distribution. A lot of pellet grills do a great job of smoking, but cooking at other temperatures can be a challenge. This design features multiple cooking zones. One zone is directly above the fire for high temperature grilling. The second zone is indirect for smoking. A higher rack gives two more temperature zones. And this model has a warming tray, which is perfect for holding temperatures or smoking at low temperatures for things like cheeses, fish, and smoked jams and that we patented how we move the airflow through it. So we cook direct over the fire here and then the heat and air comes up and in and out the flue out the bottom. So this side is offset cooking and it cooks just like an offset smoker. Um, it's the only pellet grill in the industry that does that. Okay, so if you're wanting to grill, you got this grill side. Grill over here, smoke Smoking. over here. And then you got a top grill that, you know, works like top grill of every other. And then we have a warming drawer in the bottom of it that'll actually be half of whatever the temperature you're cooking at. Uh, it's like this weekend, as I've been linking, doing some demos with it, I was cold smoking cheese in there. Oh, so, uh, yeah. so you can do a little bit of, you know, everything. Now, you may have noticed, when we listed residential products, we didn't say pizza ovens. Let's get a small peek at their R&D process and how it led to their newest products. Distributors and customers have signaled a need for a residential model pizza oven. Product designers knew they needed to achieve high pizza cooking temperatures, even heat distribution, and a consumer-friendly price point. They brainstormed the possibility of building a gravity-fed pellet pizza oven. That concept would allow them to eliminate the expense of an auger system, making the design cheaper and simpler to operate. But would it work? We're working on a gravity feed pellet fired pizza oven. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> that, um, 
that'll go to the residential market. There was our first prototype. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. So we have this uh, theory we call fail fast, fail cheap. To test the proof of concept, version one was built. No fancy components and no long setup. This version embodies their R&D mantra, fail fast and fail cheap. The idea is to put just enough into the prototype to test the concept, and if it's successful, refine more for version two. The first test were successful enough to warrant further time and money into the idea, and the second prototype was developed. It was successful enough that a full-fledged product was designed, and Alex was the first person from the public to see it. Before its full release, models are being sent to distributors for field testing and feedback. Cookshack has been around for more than 50 years, but their innovation continues. That is a powerful combination of stability and forward thinking. We learned a lot on our tour. And we saw a lot of passion for high-end cooking, quality manufacturing, and a culture of safe and happy employees. Thanks for the tour, Mr. Powell. See you on our next adventure.